Hey, what's going on, everybody? I uh, just saw this on the news. I figured I'd do a video about it uh, because there's a, a hurricane tracking on the bottom part of uh, like Mexico. And it's going to come up into like California, Arizona, probably to Texas, maybe. Well, maybe not. But here. Half of Hurricane Hillary, the storm rapidly intensifying very quickly here and. This one looks like a hurricane up here too, a little bit like. Forecasters do warn. See, it dissipates, but what, what, you can. It almost has like an eye in the middle. Could bring significant impacts to Southern California and the Southwest yeah, by the end of the rain. week into the first part of next week. Kim Wood is an associate professor it's at crazy. the University of Arizona and joins us now to talk more about the storm. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So first off, just break down the latest path of the storm. I know sometimes, you know, when you're several days out, it can kind of be a little difficult to fully figure out. But where does the storm sit right or can now? Or even and where fully it figure it out? Heading? Weather is so unpredictable, you know. So right now it's still off the coast of Mexico, fairly far south of Baja, California, moving west, northwest, uh, for the short term, but the large scale flow is expected to shift and that will allow the storm to take a more northward track due to how the ridge will shift to the east and a low pressure system will come in from the west. So this should be fun, huh? And if it does strike California, as a lot of the cones appear to show at this point, is it likely to hit as a hurricane, tropical, dis uh, tropical, tropical storm, storm depression? What I do we expect? So right now, the guidance is indicating that it may be at tropical storm intensity, which remember could be a maximum wind speed of 40 miles an hour, and that would be the maximum winds near the center. A bigger thing to focus on is the fact that the storm is not a point. As you can see on this graphic that shows the satellite view, the storm is fairly large. and where the intensity huge. of winds near the center does not necessarily relate directly to the impacts that might be felt farther from that center. And let's talk a little bit about what's known as the cone of uncertainty, because a lot of folks do think that that is the exact the path it's traveling and that the edge of the cone itself is how far the winds are spread out. But that's obviously not the case. Break it down for me. So the cone of uncertainty is constructed from the past five years of National Hurricane Center forecasts. How good are those forecasts with respect to where the storm will be? And about two thirds of the time, it's within that cone. But that means a third of the time, it could have been outside that cone. And specifically, the cone focuses on that center like that Vegas, I mentioned before. Vegas so the cone steps. just shows sort of the wiggle room for where that center might be I located be a at a given time. And as we go forward get a green time, screen behind the cone like... extends farther up the coast because we expect the storm to travel in that direction. But again, the cone specifically focuses on that center. It doesn't highlight the size of the storm nor where we would expect the impacts to take place. And we are talking a lot about California. As you can see there, we're talking maybe San Diego, Los Angeles to see the effects. But it sounds like based on the way that the storm is tracking right now, that there should be effects in multiple states, correct? Yes. So before it crosses the latitude Colorado. of the border between California and Mexico, we do expect this storm to be impacting Arizona, Baja, California. And that has some terrain along it, which will affect what kind of shape there's a lot of resorts and there too, right? The storm has when it does eventually reach California, and as it moves north, the storm may change in shape and size. And to the east of the center, that's where we would expect impacts from possibly wind, but definitely rain. And since the terrain yeah. of northern Mexico right. and the southwestern U.S. is not flat, some of that rain could be intense and cause flash flooding issues. Is it possible that we do see this hurricane strengthen even more? At last check, I know it's a category two, but could it strengthen even further as it does continue that trek there? Yeah, so Probably. as you see it on the satellite right now, the storm has a strong structure. The eye is starting to appear in this infrared satellite imagery and the ocean's quite warm. There's a lot of moisture in the air. It's really humid down there. That's and there's too. not much in the way of wind shear, which is a change in wind speed or direction with height. So the storm can stay nicely stacked. It's been hot these and last couple of weeks. That helps it 
take advantage of the energy that is present to continue intensifying. So yes, we do expect this storm to continue intensifying. National Hurricane Center is calling for it to be at least a category three hurricane at its peak, which is a, a major hurricane. And it, that doesn't mean it's going to be a major hurricane when it gets closer to California, but it is poised to use the quote unquote ingredients that are present for intensification to continue strengthening. How often do we see a hurricane or even a tropical storm actually strike a part of California? It's it's rare. Uh, if any of you have ever gone swimming off the California coast, it's quite a bit cooler water wise uh, compared to say the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic coast. And hurricanes also notice that that is comparatively cold. As a result, hurricanes or even tropical storms striking California yeah, is crazy, quite man. rare. There was I the I mean, San I've heard Diego of like, hurricane from 1939. Maybe like a typhoon or like, like a tropical storm. In the period of record, like uh, hurricane, the NHC man, offers crazy. since 1949, we've only had a this is handful like, uh, and there was that usually movie, tropical the day after The day after tomorrow storms with uh, Dennis Quaid and Jake Gyllenhaal. Which is a word that the NHC has been using for... Uh, now, all these Hillary's weird looking hurricane looking storms came in. The United States. Except they're pulling cold air down. Is there a big difference in everything. hurricanes when you're movie. talking about over in the Atlantic versus the Pacific? So the underlying physics is the same, but the conditions in which they form are different, which then affects their characteristics. Things like how quickly they can intensify, where they form in the first place, and how large or small they are. The yeah, storms the that we get something? in the eastern Pacific tend to be a little smaller, but then we get cases like Hillary where they form in really moist areas over really warm water out of what we call the monsoon trough, and Ooh. that helps them be bigger to start with. As we can see in this loop, Hillary is a fairly sizable storm, and that will affect how well, especially it when you have as it moves northward. Look, they have the thing blocking and it, and the it goes down even and we further kind of below about that this already, banner. But just rapid so it is, intensification, it seems storm. like Hillary did gain some strength very quickly. I don't know if folks did think that it was going to intensify Probably into be some crazy a hurricane, crazy surfers out there trying to I mean, get it, some it gnarl fudge, man. Gnarl fudge, bro. Yeah, the guidance going was uh, pretty keen on saying, yes, this storm is likely to intensify and reach hurricane and uh, strength. Uh, the <laughs> ingredients I mentioned before, if we have a lot of moisture, real humid, you know, the kind where you go outside and it's air you can wear, uh, really air high. You can wear. Uh, it was like that here the, ocean, the other day. It was then, so uh, effing humid for Southern California. It was insane, man. If those are all present at the same like it felt time like the and East the storm Coast. structure is starting to get organized, and then it, rained it a little can bit. then take advantage it of it down. like it had just eaten you know, 10 power crazy. bars or something. I might need a power bar. All right. Thank you so much, yeah, Kim. Couple we appreciate power taking bars, the time to join us. Buddy boy. Break all this down for us. I'm sure we'll be in touch a lot over the coming days because bar. at this point, it looks Maybe like the effects could be seen in the coming days, but possible, I guess, real uh, heavy effects there. Maybe yeah, Sunday, that's Monday. That's crazy. Yeah, so we're looking yeah. at impacts largely yeah. from rain, but also yeah. potentially from some winds, again, on the order of like 40 miles an hour or so, that low-end tropical storm strength as the system does approach California, possibly areas into uh, Arizona and Nevada. All right. Anything you want to add before I let you go? The biggest thing to focus on here are going to be those yeah, this rain is impacts. Freaking, sure this is pretty nuts. This is history in the making. If you happen to be I've never in seen an this area ever. under advice by National Hurricane Center, those key messages were real important to pay attention to. And then anything from WPC who focused more on the excessive rainfall likelihoods. All right, Kim, thank you again for taking the time to be here. Thank you again for having me. All right, everybody, and I do want to take a full look right here. Yeah, that is. Dude, look at that's nuts. Sorry, sorry about that, guys. My roommate, my roommate came in real quick, and I was telling them not to talk. I was also uh, trying to mouth to them that there's a hurricane. Because we don't normally watch the news here because we don't have TV. We just have the inter internet, the interwebs. But this is nuts, though, dude. Look at the size of this effing thing, man. It's right. Look how big that thing is. I mean, look how big this thing is compared to how big they have Los Angeles or just Phoenix. I mean, it's almost the size of Arizona. Like, that thing could cover New Mexico. That thing could totally cover New Mexico. Just go over New Mexico, you cover it from, like, Juarez all the way up to, like, northern New Mexico, well past Albuquerque. Yeah, I knew I should have taken that left.
I like when they do those jokes on. Uh, I think they do a couple of those jokes. I, I know they do it on Better Call Saul when when he's talking about why'd you come to Albuquerque. He was like, I knew I should have taken that left. Good old Saul doing Bugs Bunny jokes. But look over here though, too. Look, it looks like is that something right there too? Though it looks like a little something. Whatever it is, it also looks like it's flowing down here. So maybe <coughs> by the time this gets up here, all of this up here could join it, and we could be dealing with some kind of crazy cat. And I don't know cataclysmic, but it's going to be one for the books. Like there's going to be there's going to be some crazy footage out there of this. So stay tuned. I'll try and whatever I find on it, I'll I'll post some more videos. All right, so. If you're in Southern California, like I am, wish us all luck. <laughs> Everyone else in like Dallas and all those other like east, not East Coast because they also have hurricanes all the time. But I'm talking about like just the more centralized states. But they have they had they have uh, what, what was it, uh, tornadoes. So and those things come out of nowhere. At least the hurricanes, you have kind of a somewhat of a warning, I guess. Well, that's the video. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Peace.